Welcome to the Peter Bick Show. This is another drop-in, and we have the the privilege of talking to Russ Conser, a good friend and a, one of the smartest people I've ever met. We're just going to dive right into the concept of insets versus offsets. When people want to use carbon as a way to make sure their company doesn't get charged for all the carbon they're putting in the atmosphere, so they'll use an offset and say, hey, well, we, we stored carbon over here so our company can keep putting carbon out like we're doing, or a company that's actually growing food and saying, hey, look, our food is being grown on this beautiful piece of land, so it's an inset. So that's just a really poor way of describing it. So why don't you dive in and, and give it the Russ Concer spin? Yeah, I don't know that we have the language really fully developed yet. And even the word inset kind of is so close to offset that it may imply more parallels than are real. But at, at least in terms of concept, maybe abstract it to the level first that when we talk an offset, whether it's carbon or biodiversity or water, you know, it's some attribute um, where if I'm doing something over here that hurts or impairs something, can I do something over here that helps remediate that or counteract that system? That's what it, what an offset is. And so, and I think they've been really um, useful historically um, in doing better, even if not perfect. Let's just say nudging the system. What's an offset that you think worked? Well, I, I wouldn't consider myself to be a deep expert, but I think offsets in carbon, in biodiversity, in water, all of the examples I used, they've all been done successfully. Um, what, it, what it would say is even as they're successfully, they're probably not the bottom line end be all end all solution. They're, they're really good for transitional things. Like when you're going through a change phase on, on, on something. Now, some things there's just no helping it where if you're going to build a highway through something, it's not like you can also have a wetland, you know, where the concrete is. Now you can do some things in the, in, in the highway to have bridges and overpasses that keep wetlands connected or help drainage that keep wetlands intact. You could have a wildlife bridge over it so that wildlife... There's all kinds of things that you could do. You still have a highway. Yeah, and still have a highway. It's kind of romantic to imagine what it might have been like in any ecosystem before we altered it. But um, things are altered and we can coexist if we do so insightfully, wisely. Right. Um, et cetera, in that system. And so, you know, what we currently use the word inset for is rather than like cause damage here, remediate over here to help mm -hmm. bring in their balance. With the word inset, we mean we're going to do something over here in the thing itself. Um, directly, directly, directly impacts it. Let's talk about grazing. In grazing, I could do something that had a net benefit of some kind ecologically. Amp grazing, regenerative grazing. Yeah, as amp example. grazing, regenerative grazing, anything like that. And I could take that benefit and, you know, button it up, if you will, in a, in a well-documented box and sell that benefit to someone else who has a negative input. And we'd call that an offset. Your good work is offsetting their polluting work. I don't know, you kind of get in this good, bad um, thing. And it, 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 we all have to eat, um, right. we all have to live. People want to keep the lights on, they want to stay warm and comfortable. So there's trade-offs all over civilization. And I don't really like pointing fingers so much at people other than I think we try to think systemically about what, what's happening here. And in the concept of, uh, there are many things we can do. We're in the process of doing the thing we're doing, we can do it better can associate that better with the thing itself. So in the context of grazing, I could take that same ecological benefit and I could keep it coupled to a product. And then maybe that's as simple as a brand, right? You know, I'm going to tell you a story of where your food came from, but I might translate that into quantitative information. You know, so many tons of carbon were caught and held in the process of producing this, so much bird habitat was restored, so much additional water, quantity and quality of water. Water is one of these paradoxical things that on one hand is the most um, valuable thing around outside of the oxygen in the air, I guess, uh, for which we die in, in minutes. 
um, uh, with, without, but it's also difficult to quantify. And in fact, other things, water can be too much, too little is a good example. Sometimes I think we make things overcomplicated when we overspecify, parse them up. But like an inset in this situation would be if a herd of cattle are being grazed regeneratively and we can count how much wildlife is brought yeah. back, we can count how much water is infiltrating in, yeah. and we can count how much more carbon is cycling in that soil. Right. We can then say this steak is beneficial for these reasons right. once that animal is killed and, and boxed and all that stuff. And then that's an inset. That means that that carbon benefit or that wildlife benefit, that ecosystem benefit stays with the product. Yeah, that's that, the difference oh. really between the offset and the inset. And the offset, you decouple and mark it separately with an inset, you keep it together. And whether that's in a true like in consumer marketing thing or just in terms of a corporate footprint thing or a national inventory as, you know, I'm kind of um, a, a, a accounting data geeky type of guy. Um, yes, you are. <laughs> I, I, I think if 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 we can keep track of counting things and so that people and companies when they're buying things know that this product had a better footprint than that product, they can uh, say let the market even price that in if the government could as well. Um, but it starts with measurement. If you don't if you don't, if you don't measure and you don't count it, then it's just my story versus your story. Right. And we're in a sort of a story world without the counting right now, where people are making claims about this forest that was grown for this purpose. And then, oh, you find out, oh, guess what? That forest didn't get grown, didn't get planted. But measurement, real measurement. Yeah. Hard to do. It's going to get easier. It's expensive. We want to make it cheaper. That measurement right. is then you can really attach either this much carbon was drawn down into the system this much nitrous oxide is now not going into the atmosphere that it used to on the same farm. You can measure those things and then you can account for them. Then you can trade credits if you're doing offsets. Well, you could trade it as a credit or you just keep things coupled, but and then people uh, and that's pay the inset. For that. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the inset. So do you think that offsets and insets are a good way to go to get businesses to focus on sort of nature production of food, natural production of food? Yeah, in general, I think we're on a beneficial road. I think offsets were the place we had to start um, because it's hard to get those one-to-one -one correlations. I think insets are where we need to go. Um, can those things continue to coexist um, in the long run? Possibly. Um, but but I think, you know, people want to know that the food they eat, the clothing they're, they wear, at some point, if we can count it and people actually do care about that, then you'll see that things with lower negative footprint and even positive contribution get rewarded for that. And importantly, um, therefore, because you're measuring it all the way back to the land and ecosystem where these things happened, the people who were actually doing the good things, the farmers and ranchers, they're the ones that stand to gain uh, when this is done right. If it's done poorly, some will invent uh, various mechanisms that just a lot, create another opportunity for some middleman to get an extractive point, uh, control point, and so on. So like anything else, it can be done um, well or poorly, um, but I think it all starts with measurement um, in, in that system. And I, and I think it tends towards more and more supply chain accounting or inset things in, in time than offset things. And then exactly how that plays out at the edges over time, I'd say let, let the markets and society figure that out as we go, as opposed to stake out any hard territory. No pun intended. <clears throat> <laughs> Didn't even notice, but yes, <laughs> stake it out. There you go. So Russ Concert, thank you for joining us on the Peter Bix show drop in. Yeah. Always Peter. We appreciate you, and uh, I just I just love talking to you, man.